it under asset class because, you know, stocks might not be cheap. Bonds, you know. Sachs that I was reading this morning and most of their, their clients... And you need to be more income. nimble and more aggressive. I mean, you're a value. Make sure that we have uh, uh, adequate uh, faculty teaching that can be... Welcome to The Trading Desk, where we say money talks. My name is Dave Floyd with Aspen Trading Group here in Bend, Oregon. And with me as usual, Matt Davio of Red Rock Partners and Jesse Felder of Felder & Company. Why don't we take a look at what the markets have done since our last show. We've got a couple of charts we want to take a look at. And we actually have got some good um, news today to talk about. And what we're looking at here is the dollar index. King it, dollar. King dollar. King dollar. And um, Matt, why don't you... You got well, Ber we're Bernanke, yeah, Bernanke uh, was on this morning uh, again. Fed heads are talking uh, quite often and loud that uh, they're they're supportive of the strong dollar policy. And Jesse, you'd mentioned that, which is uh, which is, is pretty rare. Yeah. You know, I think historically the Fed they don't really have any authority over the dollars. The Treasury Department that Except does. Except printing them. And exactly, <laughs> exactly. Green, but Greenspan, you know, always had a policy of you know we don't comment on the dollar. That's not our area yeah. of of uh, expertise or management. I mean, obviously it's expertise, but right. they don't have any control over the dollar policy. Mm -hmm. That's the Treasury's business. So for, for Bernanke to be coming out and saying, we're in support of a strong dollar is, a, is an unusual step. And I step. think he also said, we're watching the dollar was the exact quote. So, yeah. mm -hmm. and it had a big, a big spike up. And you know, we've been talking on the show where all three of us are looking for a bottom in the dollar. In the dollar, it's been very elusive, but you know, maybe today's comments might maybe. be insightful yeah. on some Again, level. Again, you know, we still have a long way to go from that uh, recent low of 70, so there's still a lot of range in here. So. There's also some interesting news over the weekend. Obama's visiting China to talk Talking about, about relations and whatnot. Yuan, mm -hmm. yeah. The Chinese are, are uh, have accused us, have accused the United States of funding a huge dollar carry trade. Yeah. People right. borrowing money in the U.S. To, and inflating Chinese markets, inflating Brazilian markets, and right. the, the BRICS, as they call them, mm -hmm. you know, Brazil, Russia, and China. And that's a big and deal. I mean, that's a big deal. Creating for bubbles for these other countries. Yeah. Other countries are getting upset. You know, yeah. we, hey, you need to support a strong dollar. It's, our currencies are getting too strong right. mm -hmm. in dollar terms. So, Which is, I think, somewhat of the intention of the Fed. Sure. Absolutely. You know, to put the diversion onto other markets and have uh, dollars chase Sure. in other markets so they can, you know, <clears throat> through natural diversity, mm -hmm. yep. attribute that. We take a look at another chart here. Next one we have is um, gold. So again, you know, same theme. You yeah, know, it, 11, hand in hand. it was 11.33 when we went, went on air. I think you're projecting 11.40, so we're pretty much just there. A, just a possible <laughs> target. You know, I, I think that uh, I still stick with a, a dollar bullish forecast over the next six months to a year, and I think gold will probably go lower as a result of that as well. Yeah, well, again, Hasn't we're, yet, but we're, that's we're talking there's a lot of, a lot of divergences, a new high in the spoos, new high in, in gold. But the Silver's Russell, not making silver's not making a new high. You know, so the, the ancillary... There's the a thing lot that's hard for me is how do you on. value gold? <laughs> how do you, how do you value it? How do you un I mean, the great it's, gold trades purely on speculation, yeah. purely on it's the lesser the lesser of the two evils, so to speak, or it's sure. the it's the default trade if you don't like something else. But it's exactly. hard to kind of like you said put a value I, on. If you don't want to own any currencies, <laughs> you yeah. can own gold, right? right. So, but we'll, take, we'll keep going here. We got a couple more charts to go through. Um, this one, you know, you and Jesse, you were saying before the uh, the break or before we filmed today, you're expecting lower interest rates. Mm -hmm. I, you and I might differ a little bit. I'm just looking at it purely from a technical standpoint. Sure. This is the 10-year Treasury rate. Based on the way I'm looking at it, it looks as though rates could go higher. But you make a pretty good argument, though, too. We are in a zero interest rate environment. Doesn't yeah. seem to be much demand out there for general J goods Japan, and services. Japan, I mean, Japan has had zero percent interest rates for two decades, yeah. and they've been in and out of recession that entire time. The, right. the, the, basically, the Federal Reserve of Japan, which is the bank, you know, bank of the J Japan, has been doing everything in their power to boost the economy and whatnot. But when c businesses and consumers get in the mindset of repairing their balance sheet, paying down debt, rather than spending and growing, you have a, a really tough situation where you cannot spur growth. And, be, and as you said, it brings on a real possibility of a vicious, mm -hmm. you know, low growth recession, low growth recession uh, cycle. Right. Uh, because even is not when businesses when businesses don't want to borrow money at zero percent to grow their business, you have a real problem. <laughs> right. I mean, because you can't say, hey, well, well let's pay you two percent to borrow, to borrow yeah. this money. You can't do that. So you, there's nothing more that the, the, the Bank the of Fed's Japan can do. The Federal Reserve might face a, a yeah. similar situation sure. here. Yeah. The F efficacy becomes very muted uh, right. by the Fed. Yeah. Next chart, Jesse had a couple of, this is a really good chart, Jesse, that you created, so why don't you walk us through this yeah. one. This is really good. This is the top of the, the last bull market, 2007. 
uh, where, where the S&P 500 peaked. This is the March bottom. This is November sell-off March bottom here. We basically, you know, one of the things traders like to look at in technical stuff is to see how far we retrace this decline. This is the 50% retrace level, retracing half the decline so we, and we, half the time. Yeah. And usually that can be a really important resistance mm -hmm. level. And that's what we're seeing right now. 11, November 21st is half the time of this decline. At 11.21 in the S&P 500 is ha half the retracement, the, the price retracement. So 11.21 on 11.21 is what it projects to. Roughly in that area, I think we're we're pretty much so there right uh, now. That's so that's that's the Saturday coming up, the twenty first, and uh, mm -hmm. right before Thanksgiving. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It, and that could there. be pretty pivotal after you know the what do they call the the Friday black is it Black Friday they call it after. Right. So you know if we have a really crappy retail weekend, right. this may all come into alignment. <laughs> it, you just never know. Yeah. We've got one more chart to go through, but before we do, we have to take a quick break to pay some bills. You're watching the Trading Desk on COTV Channel Eleven.